Uh, two of the greatest home run hitters in the history of the game in this series. A Rod with 647, Jim Tomey with 612. Tomey number seven, A Rod number five on the all time list. And they lead one and two among active players. Tomey leads it off here in the third and takes a strike. He DHs tonight. Buck Showalter loves his presence in that batting order. That's in the air to left and will be easy for each row. One down. The yes, guy, please. The guy who just hit Jim Tomey when he made his debut September 4th of 1991. The guy at the plate now wasn't even born. Manny Machado. 20 years old starting third baseman and the shortstop of the future for this franchise. Foul back and out of play. Cal, would you like to join the, the conversation in terms of what John and I are doing, giving perspective on things? I was just thinking, want? that's a heck of a lot of perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a perspective on that perspective. <laughs> On a hop to Jeter at short. Hmm, that bit of perspective provided by Ari Statman Halgalima. Did he win? <laughs> <laughs> and I certainly wasn't born <laughs> then. And I was the only person in the booth who was born at that time. Robert Andino takes upstairs. his bat to center and it falls for the first Oriole hit. Well that's just the way it works sometimes. Number nine man shatters the bat gets a hit. Here's a cutter who brings his hands in a little bit and so he doesn't get uh, it too far on the fist and he's strong enough with good bat speed to push that out in the center field. Makes the hitter very happy. So for the first time tonight, Pettit works out of the stretch. He's got a great move, and Andino had a lead of about eight inches. Well, Andy just shuts down the running game. I mean, it's well documented. Whether it's a balk or not, it's one of the best left-handed moves in baseball. And uh, you just got to have a one-way lead, which means you're not looking to steal. You're just looking to protect that, ba that bag at first base. And he has 102 pickoffs for a career. I wonder if he got me in one of those 102. It's quite possible. The word is that if you go on first move, that Andy Pettit has a good move, but he predetermines that he's going to go to first or, go, or to go to home. So if you're going to have success off of him, maybe a bigger lead and go on first move. McLouth takes outside two balls and no strikes. He flied out to left his first time. Cal, you've been over there with uh, Andy trying that move on you before. As McLouth lines it to center, that's going to fall for a hit. They're at first and second with two out. Yes, and I took a. Uh, a little league lead where you have one foot on the base and one foot off <laughs> because it looks it's a darndest thing it looks exactly like he's throwing the ball to home and even if you're going to take your eye off him for a minute to go into your secondary lead he affects your secondary lead it's that good After retiring the first eight he faced, the last two of single. And here's J.J. Hardy.
Hardy doubled last night in the bottom half of the eighth to lead off the frame in a 2-2 game, and the Orioles could not push him around. And the Yankees scored five in the ninth. 2-0. Pettit has never given up a 2-0 count home run in his postseason career. When you think about that, it's pretty impressive. That's a hitter's count. Three balls and no strikes. Power hitting Chris Davis is on deck. Guy who led the Orioles with 33 home runs. Another bad one loads him. And there it is. He knew the situation there wasn't as vital with the left hander being on deck. You know, you're going to work in favor of your count. And he let that 2 0 count go the other way with no worries at all. If he walked him, he would attack a fresh hitter, which is a left hander, and you'd think he has the advantage in that situation. Nonetheless, Baltimore has put some pressure for the first time on New York. See how they respond, see how Andy pitches to Chris Davis. Davis hit number seven in the lineup in the opener against left-hander C.C. Sabathia. Tonight he's moved up to the number three hole, and he bats here in the third with the bases loaded. And suddenly Pettit can't find the strike zone. Well, they went to the windup. He's been comfortable on the windup. You can, sometimes you get a little off kilter when you go to the stretch, so he feels comfortable. Two outs, knowing he needs to make the pitch. That'll guarantee the runner at second to score. That ball is lined to right. It gets down for a hit. One run is in. Two runs are in. The Orioles lead it two to one. I'd have to look at it maybe on a split screen, but I believe if he catches that ball, he tags him before that second run scores, John. It was that close. All of this has happened with two outs in the third. And Dino with a single. McClouth with a single. Hardy with a walk. And Chris Davis, a 2-1 single to right. Adam Jones waiting. A foul out of play. Here comes that play a line drive here now J.J. Hardy's looking ahead to see if he's going to go to go and then he gets caught right behind and yeah it looks like they got to play if Derek catches that ball and makes a quick tag. Hardy and Davis are the runners. Jones 0 for 8 this postseason. Trying to break out of that funk. I'd say he was just a bit out front of that one. Ground ball into the Yankee dugout. Jones had a key at bat last night. We talked about the double by Hardy. The Orioles couldn't get him over. Jones struck out for the first out. And Hardy stayed at second. Sabathia retired the next two. By Pettit. All the way, one ball and two strikes it remains. You know, the postseason can be so cruel and a condensed formula when you start 0 for 4, 0 for 6, everyone says, oh, you're struggling, you know, you're pressing. It only takes one at bat, a couple hits. That's why in a course of 162 game, everything evens out. But in a short series, your stars have a lot of pressure on them. They got to take what the pitcher's given them and not expand and get too aggressive. So one hit from either one of these guys that we talked about in the open 
turns their series around and you feel better as a team. Joe well, spoiled that. It's still one and two. Yeah, it certainly always feels better when uh, even if you're over your team wins. Yeah, it puts more pressure on you when your team doesn't win and then everybody's reminding of you about the fact you, don't, you haven't been in, getting any hits. Hardy with the lead at second. Davis from first. And here comes the one two or won't be made as Pettit steps off. Well, that move isn't quite as deceptive as the one to first. <laughs> Two outs, nobody on. And the Orioles have rallied once again to score some runs. And they still have this going. Playoff baseball, it's hard to get three outs in an inning sometimes. Grounded in the hole under the glove of Jeter. Hardy stayed at third. What went on at third base? Well, if you're running the base right here, JJ, I'd take a quick peek. But he doesn't take a quick peek to understand that, and he doesn't get the signal right away, so he stops. And by the time he stops, it's too late to get him started again. Watch DeMarlo Hale. He's windmilling him. I think Jeter actually, I think Jeter gets him more than he was paying attention to the third base coach because Jeter had his glove out, unfortunately, for Baltimore. That's a tough break. JJ knows it. You just got to have to have your big catcher come through and all be forgotten. They yep. scored a hit. Base is loaded. And Matt Wieters in the air behind second. And Robinson Cano squeezes it. The Orioles score two. Could have been more. Should have been more. It's a 2 1 game. 